Hey everybody, uh, Carl here again, and uh, now before you, you go, oh no, not this again, <laughs> as you can tell by the title, uh, we're still in the uh, transmitter mode, and uh, some of the ones, I mean, you've seen uh, uh, Doug uh, at Mosslack, he's been working on some, and uh, Ron C, he's putting together the uh, uh, the Rick McWhorter uh, tube AM transmitter, which I'm going to build one of these days. Uh, you know, and you know, for references, you can go to Rick's website. I'll have a link uh, below for that. And uh, John in Arkansas, Joe Arnon, he built the, he built the same one. He's got a great series on that. Now Ron's building it, and uh, and someday I want to build one. But for right now, what I've been trying to do is uh, kind of work on a more easier, a more uh, affordable. If you don't, you know, if you can't go out and buy a bunch of tubes and buy, although that one is not really that bad, but. I was thinking, you know, something that maybe you could get, uh, maybe you have to buy a few cheap parts and the rest you can get out of your junk drawer and stuff. So I've been continuing on this quest. And first of all, AM transmitters are a lot tougher to build than FM. Uh, that's usually the case. Now, uh, you know, you can have problems with both of them, and transmitters are a funny thing. I mean, I was I started getting interested in them uh, even way before I got my ham license. When this was way back before I really was doing a lot of stuff on YouTube, I've always I just loved transmitters, and um, but you find out when you start building them. That uh, they can be tough, and they can they can mess with your your mind, and then get you really frustrated. You can put something together, know that you did everything what you're supposed to do, hook it up, and it. Not only can you not get the frequencies you want and get it to transmit it on the whatever you want to try to transmit it on, uh, you it might not even I oscillate for you. It might just, you know, lay there like a dead cow, and, uh, and you know, so then you go back and you try it again, and you try it again, and and then finally, usually you'll get one and, and you'll get it oscillated. Now, it might not oscillate uh, in the area you want, but at least you've got that thing going back and forth and she's, and she's actually running. Uh, then you got to start dialing in, you find out just how touchy uh, capacitors can be and your coils can be uh, it's uh, it gets a little crazy but if you stick with it and have fun with it you know think of it hey I'm learning as I go learning as I go uh, believe me you'll get it and then once you hit it it seems like you get on a, a roll that you can okay now I can do better and, and you'll find that's the case now like I said, for me, I had uh, I had pretty good luck with the FM transmitters. Uh, you can build a real simple one, like I said. Uh, there's a guy out there, uh, his, uh, his YouTube channel is Desario3. And he does like these bugs and stuff. And there's books out there, there's the... Um, the evil guy or something like that. He, I, I got his book. I can't, I can't remember what it is. But there's books out there where people, you know, and if you, usually if you follow what they're doing, and then you might have to tweak a little bit here and there, you'll get it and you'll get it working. Uh, now, you know, here's another thing. Some resistors, it's not that big of a deal, and other ones have to be right dead on. Same way with the capacitors. You might have part of the circuit that you're actually, it's only as a filter, 
so you can be off a little bit here or there but when you get to other parts where you're in the you're in the tank circuit and that's got to go back and forth exactly the way it's supposed to go back and forth you have to you know somebody designed it to do that and unless you're really really good at it and you know how to design tank circuits you might want to try to stick as close as you can to the designers um, so I just you know that's the big intro now uh, what's this better AM transmitter well uh, once again our, our good friend Rick McWhorter designed a solid state um, AM transmitter and this one uses a MOSFET and, and, a, and a special little coil. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this and I asked him and he was so generous like he always does with his stuff. He said that you know I can post the actual uh, thing in here but for right now we're just looking at it here and I'll probably as I'm editing this I'll probably put the good one over top. But if, as you see here uh, this uh, 195A MOSFET it's an IRLB 3034 PBF. Now I ordered a, I ordered like five of them. And I got them pretty cheap. I mean, you can get those. Uh, that's a key uh, component. And the other thing is this oscillating coil. It's the P hyphen C70 hyphen OSC. Now I ordered one from. Uh, Antiques Electronics, and uh, it was, you know, well, I got it. I got it on the board, and I'll show you that when I do some zoom ins. It's not the cheapest thing. I think I got the whole thing for. I can't even tell you now. It, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. Matter of fact, I'm going to get another one, uh, so I can have a backup, and then I'm also I'm I'm going to, uh, as I'm working on this. I'm going to try to wind my own coil and see if I can imitate and get the same. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to take and I'm going to try to wind my own coil and see if I can get the same Henry's out of out of the coil that I wrap. And so I I wouldn't have to buy another one of these things. And eventually, I want to. Uh, build one of these and, and put it on a board, put it in a box and have it, uh, you know, I've, I've got the talking house thing and that works great. I like to have one that's a little more mobile, so, you know, a little smaller and uh, so that's what I'm going to try to do with this one. But it's a real simple, uh, nice circuit that he made here and I'll tell you what, I put it together on the breadboard and the moment I hooked it up, I'm, I didn't have to tweak it. It, it, it fired right up. So uh, I'm going to show you that here in a little bit too. But okay, so let me let me get off of this, and I'll take you off the tripod for just a little bit. I'm going to bounce around. Sorry, I, you know, I've been trying not to do that as much, but uh, on this, if I, you want to see, it, you know, I got to do that. Okay. Alrighty, so here's the circuit. There's that oscillating coil right there. Okay, I don't know if you can see the MOSFET. That's right in there. And then I just it has a few capacitors. It's got a couple resistors and. Uh, and she works really good. So let me uh, let's kind of let's kind of fire this up and see what happens. Uh, I'm on something here that won't uh, get me in a lot of trouble. Okay, I got that going. Now let's see if I turn on the... Whoa! That's it.
comes through pretty good. Now, when I first started, uh, this is the capacitor I used, all right? And uh, I dug through my box, and I found a little teeny one that worked real good. And uh, Okay, let me turn this off. I don't think I'll get hit for it, but let's not chance it, okay? Okay. Now, um, one thing I want to remind you guys. Uh, this is on a breadboard, and we know that, you know, breadboards are great. I've used them for years. I mean, you look back at my old um, videos, and I, you usually see one stuck in the back because I've just, I've used them, you know, way before YouTube. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't. I can't even tell you how old this one here is. This is an old Radio Shack one. I've, you know, I've had to take it apart and clean the rust off it, so it's that old. Um, but even with that, this thing fired right up. Now I know I I only have it on 14 volts. I'm not going to shine up there and show you because the light's up there and it just blinds. Uh, Rick originally designed this to run on 24 volts. And, uh, and I kicked it up to like 23 on my, uh, my uh, power supply, and it was powerful. Now, I'll give you, uh, if, if you go and you watch his, one of his latest videos, I'll, I'll post a link to that too. He had a request, somebody wanted to be able to run it off a wall wart. And so he designed a 12 volt uh, power supply to go with this, and uh, and it ran great. And I can tell you, I just well what you heard it was it's on 13 or 13 or 14. I can actually let me crank it down to 12. Okay, I'm at 12 volts. Let's turn it back on. Let's see. Sounds pretty good, and that's 12 volts. Okay, now uh, I can try it with my. Uh, let's see. Let's try it with this one. Let's say I'm radio. Now I'll tell you, I, uh, I try to get it in the living room. Now you got to remember I'm in a trailer, which is like a big metal box, and sometimes it acts like a big shield. So uh, you got to keep that in mind. Uh, I went in the, and I, I couldn't pick it up my stereo. I didn't try it on one of my transistors. But uh, I think this one, I don't think I'm going to have a bit of problem. I'm actually going to try it outside, too, on a later video. Now, like I said, on this here, I originally... Okay, let's get it together, Carl. Okay. I originally used this here. All right? And um, that worked, you know, it worked great. I hooked it on the uh, two of the leads, and uh, at the time, I mean, I just hit it right. I didn't have to dial it in, though you can dial it and fine-tune it, and that works fantastic. And now I have it, like I said, on that little guy right there. The, uh, the coil, and as you can see, it's, it's 495 to 48 uh, picofarads. I've got that right here. Okay. And uh, 
it's just floating around right now. I don't have it even secured down. I just got uh, three gator clips on it. And I got that running into here. Now, this calls for uh, a dot zero three microfarad capacitors, one there and one there. Uh, I I had a uh, a dot zero one and a dot zero two, so I put them in parallel, and I had three on this one. And over here, I only had a uh, uh, a dot zero one and a uh, dot zero one five. And so instead of uh, dot zero three, I've got dot zero two point five. So, but in its work, you see, it's working fine. Uh, the resistors are pretty easy. Uh, 10k, 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 and 500 ohms. So I had the 10k's. Uh, the only one I didn't have was the 500, and I used a 470, and it worked great. So uh, other, I mean, you can see it's pretty darn simple. It's not, it's not a whole lot, and uh, I can testify uh, it. You don't, there's not a lot of frustration on this one. Now, you know, the trick is, like with all this stuff, you got to, like, triple check your wiring because it's so easy. That's one thing about breadboards. If you're not used to using them, it's so easy to uh, miss hooking things up. Uh, it, just believe me, it, it takes a little time to get used to it. But, and, and guys that use these for years and years, like you know who, uh, have a tendency to hook them up crazy. So, um, that's just something to keep in mind. So, I wanted to show you this one, and I wanted to uh, kind of uh, let you guys know that this one here does work. And, you know, if you kind of want one that's would go nice in your house, and you can't really afford... Uh, uh, talking house and you can't afford to build the the big tube one at the moment you might want to consider this one uh, uh, you got to give Rick credit he's just uh, when it comes to uh, building these things <laughs> uh, they're right on the money so all right I'm gonna let you go for now and I might have an FM one that I might be working with later on plus I'm going to see if I can like I said uh, I already found a, a small uh, capacitor, and, you know, you can find them. They're out there, and you can get them on eBay and that. Um, I'm going to try to wind my own coil. I don't know if I can, you know, if that's going to work or not. But, uh, and I haven't tried other MOSFETs. I imagine they might work too. But I can tell you, you can get these cheap, and, and it works right out of the box. So, you know, that's something to consider. But if you have some... Uh, you might want to try the ones that you have. So, it's an end channel. So, just keep that in mind. And, uh, I will get back if, if I get more improvements as far as, you know, being able to do my own coil and not have to buy one of these, uh, uh, C70s. Uh, I'll let you know. But, uh, until then, I just want to throw this out at you and, uh, and hope you try it. And if you do, please leave a comment. Okay, everybody, thanks so much. Have a great day, and uh, I'll be talking to you real soon.